Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Hello everybody. I'm going to be continuing my thoughts on the Netflix shows from Marvel. This one will be Luke Cage. Luke Cage stars Mike Coulter as Luke Cage. I think he's really good for the part. Although when it first started, I might have had other people in mind. Mahershala Ali is Cottonmouth. Simone Missick as Misty Knight. She's pretty good in it. Theo Rossi, Eric LeRae. Rosario Dawson is in it, and she has been in the other ones I've done. She's something that a character that is a blend from the comics and somebody who holds the the all the Netflix shows together in a way. Alfre Woodward is Mariah. And she's great in this. I think it does a good job of transferring the show from Jessica Jones because Luke Cage appears first on Jessica Jones and they do a good job of using him. So season one is him going to Harlem and Netflix has a really good uh, standard when depicting New York and Harlem is very unique. They do it well. Like I said, in every show, it's, it's always believable you're in New York and the settings don't jar you at all. This has another sort of character in the show and it's the nightclub. Think of it like the Apollo Theater to some extent. I was surprised at how much I enjoyed the music. Not being a big fan in that sense, it fit the environment so well, it felt like it belonged. Now, the first season, I believe each episode is named after a Gangstar song. And for the second season, the episodes are named after a Pete Rock and Seal Smooth song. I don't think it matches up with lyrics, but just to use the, the song title as the episode. Season one sees Luke Cage becoming a hero. You can see uh, aspects of his character growth from Jessica Jones. There is story in Jessica Jones that gets a little more fleshed out. Now that he's got his own show. The characters who interact, or oh, it's done very well. I had a couple of nitpicks, but maybe who they chose for certain parts. But all in all, it doesn't lower the value to me. I enjoyed Blue Cage both seasons. First season might be a family affair type thing. And they continue that into the second season. He seems to be the... Captain America, if you want to say, of the Defenders or the Netflix shows. Or he tries to be in a certain way. I love where they went with it. The momentum of the episodes are pretty good. There is a trend Netflix will do. I enjoy it. But for a 13-episode season, they find one or two episodes that dial down the intensity and the action for a little more exposition and flashbacks. Like I've said before, Netflix does flashbacks well. They work in all the shows and it works very well here too. I think I could say I enjoy season one more than two, but they're so close as they're very good shows. It's a very good show and the seasons are good. I might just have a better um, appreciation for season one. Music, like I said, the club becomes its own character, its own feel, which is hard to do. So I appreciate that. The environment, everything feels real. They don't go too over the top. Again, Netflix has a way of not having to display 
huge special effects and displays of power. They tone it down and give you good angles and a, a believable way of doing it. Especially for someone like Luke Cage. I don't give spoilers and reveals in these. These are like my thoughts, so maybe I should have said it at the beginning. But even the character of Luke Cage, who is somewhat invulnerable and super strong. The second season is very good, and it if the first season is him becoming a hero, the second season is uh, the trials and the vulnerability that he shows emotionally and physically. Again, another good villain. I think the show did a good job of not overplaying their hand, although I still think Jessica Jones had the best display of a Marvel villain, period, even from the movies. But Luke Cage does it good. You're having fun. You're enjoying yourself. Again, the music, the setting, the environment, all feels real. There are some lulls, but I think they're planned. There's a couple of choices here and there I might disagree with. But I try to look at it as if, all right, so it's not going the way I thought it would. I would have rather seen this character arc go this way. But when it comes down to tying up season one, I thought it did a fantastic job in giving us a, a new side to Luke Cage. And there's a little twist and reveal uh, reveals in the show. They're not major. But at the end of season two, I got to admit, I got intrigued. At this point, we know there aren't going to be any more Netflix shows. And I'm not sure if canceling people's contracts and making certain things official is a way to say, well, we had to end that transition. Disney and Marvel doing their own network. So I'd love to see Luke Cage and the actor portraying him put into the movies after Luke Cage comes Iron Fist and then the lead in to the Defenders which I love I think every Netflix Marvel show is very good to great so I don't have a disappointing show maybe I'll do the Iron Fist one but that might be the Critic in me saying, okay, I could see this is whatever, not the most, the strongest of their lineup. But Luke Cage is up there for me. I like the song, the entrance title, and how they blended music that I don't really appreciate that much in my personal life. I don't go to look to um, expand my horizons in music in that direction a lot, although I do from time to time. So it was uh, a pretty good way of. Uh, presenting the culture, the environment in a way where I appreciated it and was looking forward to more. And when I was younger, I had a, a bagel route and then I drove a school bus. And part of those routes had to do with Harlem because I live in Brooklyn, New York. So I'm actually familiar with the area, the parks, the, the um, landmarks. So I think... That lends me uh, a little, um, let's see, a little more credibility to me when I watch the shows. Like, I'll, I'll keep talking about how good every show does the environment and shows New York. And for the most part, if I'm correct, they do film in New York. But it's, a, it's refreshing to see it and not be immediately um, reminded, oh, that's not Manhattan and that's not Harlem. So Luke Cage is another winner in the Marvel line, in my opinion. There are references to the greater Marvel Universe in almost every show. Not guest appearances, but references. They'll turn a phrase and use an obvious uh, pointer to a movie here and there. Maybe season two of Luke Cage is this not that present isn't felt so much and i think maybe 
in the second seasons of the shows and even for Daredevil 3 and Jessica Jones 3, maybe the arguments or the breakup of the divisions in TV and movie between Marvel shows a little bit. Now, Netflix's Luke Cage is just under, for me, Jessica Jones and Daredevil's first two seasons. I put it right about under there. So I do think it's a better show than Iron Fist, but like I said, I'll do my Iron Fist uh, thoughts and I enjoy it. I recommend the show. It's fun. If you want to start from the beginning, you might want to remember that Luke Cage in the Netflix universe, so to speak, started on Jessica Jones. I'm not sure what episode, but it's pretty early. I think he leaves for a time. So you might want to look at that, but that's not necessary. I think Luke Cage does a good enough job. The side characters, uh, Misty Knight is really good and eventually leading up to other things going into the defenders it all comes together so i, I think it's, it works as a standalone without having to go back so i think i'll end it here i wish the shows were continuing i do have a criteria for saying you know you know uh, a show should have a certain amount of seasons before you put them into the uh, a different category of you know subjective i guess greatness but so enjoyable a lot of fun i think everybody should go watch it everybody have a good one i'll see you next time